Hi, everyone. How are you doing on this Thursday, February 25th, 2021? Uh, my name is Joel Ivany, and I'm the Artistic Director of Against the Grain Theatre, and it's wonderful for anyone who is tuning in here to um, have this series between myself and incredible artists um, and artistic people in the industry to talk about um, how they're doing, how we're getting through this um, time that we're in and um, just to catch up with them and, and see how they are. I want to acknowledge that we, that me, Joel, in Toronto, that I'm on a Treaty 13 territory, which is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. Um, I've been here for 40 years, and I'm very grateful to be on this land to, to make music, to make art, and um, thankful for this, this land and um, grateful for it every day that, that I am here. Uh, our guest today, though, is a very special Canadian um, person. He, he is a member of the Order of Canada. He is a commander of the Order of the British Empire. He made his debut at the Salzburg Festival 30 years ago the Metropolitan Opera 23 years ago and created, he loves new opera as well, he created roles such as Robert Oppenheimer and the world premiere of John Adams's Dr. Atomic. He's a frequent collaborator of Kaiha Sariaho. Um, I'd like to welcome Canadian baritone Gerald Finley. Jerry, welcome. Oh, great to be here. Lovely to see you. Oh, great to see you too. It's um, We were just able to kind of quickly, briefly chat, but how are you doing these days, where where are you? Where are you streaming in from uh, t today, tonight? Well, I think probably like most of us, we're at home. Um, I'm at home in England. Uh, it uh, my home is in Tunbridge Wells, and um, I've uh, I've been very fortunate to uh, spend more time here than than I would ever ever have thought possible in the career that I had been leading. And uh, yes, trying to nudge on the British spring a little bit because um, <laughs> we, we actually do have, uh, there, there are a few daffodils and crocus kind of starting to sprout now. And uh, I'm really sorry to say that to any Canadians, um, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's really is an encouraging sign that, um, yeah, that uh, new life and, and, uh, and real energy is, is, is really bursting bursting out we probably haven't had a spring quite like the, like we're going to have where exactly like you described seeing flowers and growth and newness um happen will certainly will be grateful probably this this spring more than ever before oh completely in fact i it, in comparison to the spring a year ago the the kind there's the, this kind of excitement really about the change of season uh, this time, I mean, we were we were very very blessed with extraordinary weather in in uh, in April and May here in UK last year, and that was such a comfort to have really the embrace the embrace of of warmth and sunshine and and really the ability to get out and enjoy what was out there because we weren't going anywhere and. Um, and we can feel it again. I think this, you know, it's, it's reminding us that actually there's there is such a lot out there for us to just absorb and and be at one with. I guess that kind of you know it's been interesting, really chatting with different people about how they've been able to cope during this lockdown period. What what is sort of um, how what have you been able to hold on to during this period of uncertainty and of obviously when when not just you but you and all your colleagues are used to performing, collaborating, what are some of those lessons that you're you're learning during this period of pause and uncertainty? Yeah, well, as you say, I mean, our, you know, I, we are part of a wonderful profession, which for me really was just always the extension of a playground. Hmm. Um, and that, that, that kind of, you know, we would try things out and you'd put your own self into you know, into situations that you didn't know whether you could cope with or not, and you use the the schooling and the discipline and all that to kind of get you through the the real uh, 
you know, the artistic kind of um, framework or the intellectual framework. But really, it is about then, for for me anyway, it's about letting go and taking risks and and putting yourself in front of a public, uh, you know, pouring your heart out, you know, really having that. And, you know, having that kind of avenue somewhat curtailed in the last 10 or 11 months, um, I've discovered it again in the children. Um, hmm. Be, spending time with my then four, now five-year-old daughter. I mean, it's just fantastic. There's no judgment. There's just wonder at the world and always asking questions. Then that kind of, that real demand of how does this work and what's happening and why? And uh, and that's, you know, that's <laughs> such fuel to, to me as an artist to, to, to keep wondering how, why, um, and... I've really, really enjoyed every moment um, of of that of that energy coming in from my own space. Um, I know Joel, you are. A, are I was going to say a, 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 a producer of, of of small people, and so you probably <laughs> have that energy around you, probably more than you would prefer. But in but but even so, there is that that energy of 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 complete openness. Um, and, and, you know, we as adults, oh, yes, there is kind of the, the, the essence of this is hard. You know, people are having to protect themselves. We have to look after our vulnerable people. Uh, you know, how do we do that as a society? All that kind of really hard philosophical weighing ups of, 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 uh, how do you survive economically? And yet how do you reach out and support people without the, the, the comfort of touch. Um, mm. Well, I've, that, that is a, as an artist, I've realized that that's exactly what we do, mm. you know, and that's given me more renewed energy to think, okay, this is our job is to go out and start the healing, start the renewal, start the, the reconnection of, of souls and, and all of that. Um, so yeah, I've, I've actually found this a tremendous, well, um, invigorating time, time that I was bogged down with in travel and logistics and, mm. you know, the next job. And um, yes, I miss that. Of course, I miss those things. But, uh, you know, overall, I'm feeling, overall, I'm feeling that, you know, we're all, we're going to get through this, no question. Um, and uh, I think the generation or two before us had, you know, major world problems to deal with. Um, during the wars, and uh, that's hmm. something that I think if we, if our if our war is you know COVID, well, okay, we're blessed to be in a digital age, and we have to make the most of the advantages that we have in dealing with something like that. But yeah, I've I've worked hard on myself too, uh, yeah. singing, 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 singing. Um, didn't sing for the first two months. Um, I just you know it felt like a vacuum. But then, um, but then I started going again and thought, no, this is the time to work. If I'm going to have a final stage of my career, then let's make it as as uh, fun a singing one as possible. And I've just last week, I've recorded uh, another Schubert cycle. Um, wow. Spent my whole lockdown learning Schubert and really trying to sing it the best I can. So it's yeah, I've I've been working hard. Well, that's going to be a treat to hear. That's. It's wonderful. We've had some young singers who have sent in some questions, and I think um, similarly they they understand how difficult this time period can be to to sing. And I guess as an artist, a singer, you said two months of not singing. What was there something that when that wall kind of hit, and or what what was it that motivated the to, the inspiration to, to to fight through that and just to to sing? Was it a, a slow, steady, intentional thing, or? Well, I think it was. I mean, the, the partly was exhaustion. I mean, the the, <laughs> the 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 just the un uh, the unconscious, uh, just saying, you don't have to make a noise today. Uh, let's not, <laughs> and uh, and actually. I mean, as I said, being outside in those two months, you know, hearing 
hearing, I mean, everything was quiet outside, everything, except the birds. The birds were not quiet. <laughs> and, and whether they were louder or celebrating or, you know, just audible. Um, and it was just kind of part of that was they are so loving being alive. <laughs> um, and I've realized, uh, well, after a while, it became, I wasn't tired, as tired. And I started to just enjoy, I mean, I've always loved singing. I've always loved the ability to sing. And actually, I do find it a, a release. And it just happened one day when, when I thought, okay, you, you, this is, you've been missing this. Let's get back on it. You know, you've worked through the, through the dismal vacancy of it and the, and the, and the, this, the, the horizon. What is that dark horizon? Um, and there was, there were projects ahead, which I then became hopeful for. Hmm. And that was, and that was really the, the, obviously the, the greater motivating influence when you think, well, that actually might happen. And I really want to do that. Um, it's, it's, as well as the economics of that, you know, simply thinking, how will it feel to do that? And suddenly everything ignited again. Hmm. That's, that's good to hear. Do you, I think that's um, a natural part in all of us to, to appreciate what we have is to, to not that it's a, a down thing, but to go through those moments of difficulty, I'm, I'm sure lead us to appreciate it what we do and, and what we're able to do so much more. You know, um, I, I feel that when we're on our own, of course, we're not giving out mm. or we're not, not we're, we're not aware that people are potentially out there receiving what we do. And that's why we have an audience. That's, you know, that's kind of the, the a bit of the, the, the fire that, 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 that we exchange in, in motivation and inspiration and, you know, this communication between us as performers and audience. Um, and I think digitally, it took us a little while for us to realize that actually there are audiences out there that really, really were missing us. Hmm. And, um, and for, for the most part, it was an opportunity for us to kind of regain a, a perspective that yes, perhaps appearing live is not the only way. Uh, we still have things to to offer. We're all getting used to, to digital platforms and and delivery systems. Um, and I mean, someone said to me the other day, "What would we have done if this is if this had happened twenty five years ago when we didn't hmm. have this inter internet uh, access? I mean, what? How would I have communicated with my mother? How would, in Canada? How would I have, you know, um, figured out what my uh, what my son at Whistler was really up to, and uh, <laughs> and so um, you know, in in many ways, it's you know, again, one has to. I mean, I have to always look at the blessings that that yeah. that we were able to do. Um, yeah, and I'm fortunate, and and I'm, you know, uh, it, what we can do as artists is only our part in in the in the support and healing and and you know, renewal of, of, um, of society's challenges. In some ways with all the digital too, for me, it's almost full circle, especially talking to you now, only that um, in my earlier days of getting to know opera and learning about opera, um, it was films of Owen, you, you filming Owen Wingrave, uh, La Mode de Loin, all these productions that were filmed in some specifically for, for the medium, which um, yeah, we're, we're great to be able to to have and do, and so um, it's great that you've been a champion of them in the past, and probably realize that that's probably part of the future as well. And so, I guess, what do you think the music scene should look like when when we're when we're back? Well, I mean, I I I feel I feel like a caged animal you know ready to get out there and it must be the same feeling for everyone i mean i understand that that people have thought you know can i sustain it can i keep at it is it worth it to me is it you know and and these are real these are real challenges um everybody i hope by now knows the wonderful um movement by barbara hannigan 
um, called Momentum now. And, you know, I'm mm -hmm. hoping that, that, that I, as a senior colleague, can, can look to the younger colleagues and go, okay, you know, th there are fewer opportunities. Uh, and, you know, our, the, our, my profile is enabling me to uh, take on work and take on a little uh, more uh, activity than, than, you know, than's trickling down. And so why can't I simply share a little bit of that, you know, life sustaining water of activity with um with those that aren't quite having it so you know it, it's happening in the conducting world it's happening i think in the performing world um in in the vocal world uh we have the opportunities of recitals and shared concerts and things like that if we can get promoters on board as well then you know we will have done our work um it's uh it's still a business and so the economics of it still are tough to convince the the business side of people, um, agents and promoters equally needing to engage as well, but it's only in their interest to bring on the next new new level of artists. Yeah, we were. I was able to t chat like this with with Barbara, where she was talking about that as well, and it's great to hear that right. there's other artists coming on board and realizing that um, yeah is. is uncertain as the future may be for our younger artists it's it's wonderful to hear of those more senior artists uh, who who can pr possibly create opportunity and um yeah because i think they'll need it as well kind of yeah it's a it's an it can feel like a scary world and and when we're unsure of what's ahead um those who can give some wisdom and mentorship um sounds like a no brainer well I, th I think that's at least one uh, one part of what the new order needs to to, to f how how it needs to function. The other part is that I think we're going to be a uh, a more uh, perhaps a more locally based um, industry. Uh, people realize that travel isn't quite the wonderful thing that it it, it could hmm. be. Um, I was happy to see that uh, you know around Atlanta that they you know creating their own sort of enclave of, of resident, you know, pro international professionals. Um, and I've been blessed in, in being based in the UK. I'm, I've, you know, been up and down to London. I'm, I'm only an hour's drive from London and it's, um, you know, the ability to, to be available at relatively short notice for pro London projects is, you know, has helped me so much. So, and I think that's going to, you know, influence, a lot where people are actually going to live now um hmm. and our environment of course that's that's the other thing um you know there's going to be many more and i would say lean and 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 agile uh performing spaces um to to bring people into new environments where they might never have heard music before and that's 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 the next step is to you know is to combine technology uh uh with delivering sound music and people uh bring them bring them all together you're speaking like a like a general director i love it i, I, I think that's <laughs> I'm not, not too I'm, there's no job i'm not <laughs> applying for any job that's for sure not, yeah exactly we want the <laughs> the third act first exactly um, yes. <laughs> but um that, that's kind of amazing and you a lot of your training was done in in london and um you've been there for a while um you're also known for, you know, as a theater director, opera director, obviously I'm drawn to the, the dramatic side and, and from seeing you live in performance as well, that's something that you're, that you're known for as well, exceptionally. And I, I just wonder when it comes to acting in opera, clearly in opera, you, you need the, the, the instrument, but where, where did you learn to act in opera? How do, was there certain teaching? Is it sort of experience? How do you approach sort of that element, the the dramatic side of a character? Yeah, I, I as I said earlier on, I mean, it's been a, it's been such a lovely playground. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, the the ability to inhabit different different worlds, different characters, different stories. Um, Yes, I've. It's not that I've been dissatisfied with my own um, uh, 
sort of trajectory in 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 my own personal life at all. Um, hmm. What people always used to say about, uh, and this is not in any way a comparison, but people used to say that Peter Sellers, the actor, um, hmm. was was you could almost feel the fact that he needed the next project or the next character in order to live because his own life was really very, very almost, I mean, tragically boring. Hmm. Um, and that he wasn't extreme. He wasn't very funny as a person. He wasn't very, you know, a, as a private person. And yet this creativity was absolutely unleashed, uh, you know, on screen or on, on stage. And, and I feel, I understand that element to it that I've, I'm, I'm not a fantasist or a Walter Mitty, but I think there's, hmm. uh, there's this whole idea that, yes, I wonder what it really, what did it really feel like to be William Tell, you know? Uh, and for goodness sake, Robert Oppenheimer. I mean, honestly, this, hmm. or, or a medieval troubadour looking for, for his great love in, um, or, you know, or a young soldier or brought, being brought up in a soldier's family and you having absolutely the, the pacifist bug. What, you know, that, those, those dynamic um, challenges within yourself, uh, the, the dilemma. I mean, I struggled with, you know, shall I be a vet? Shall I be a singer? Shall I be a choral director? <laughs> uh, but none of, none matched, none right. matched wonderful dramatic uh, challenges between. When you're when you're preparing to to sing a role like the like Don Giovanni, which I, I saw you do at, at Glyndebourne, or or another sort of Iago, do you do you look at your colleagues' performances, or do you prefer to leave the leave the uh, the palette blank and sort of paint it yourself? Well, John, I always go to the music. The mm -hmm. music, um, particularly in someone like Verdi, um, and you know, really has. The, uh, it's it's there are so many clues really in the color of of or, or just the, the the direction of 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 thought process um, and I really just try and you know mine that with with colleagues and with with um, the whole um, available library shall we say of of performances of course those are those are useful but I found really very very early on that. And very early on, in fact, as a very young baritone, that if I listened to Fisher Diskow and tried to do what he did in recital, mm -hmm. it was hopeless. I mean, I just couldn't sing it. I just couldn't sing it. So I, I thought, well, I have to make it mine. I have to do what I, even if it's, even if I have to say no to a role, I turned down Leporello my whole first decade. Hmm. And yeah, and it was just, it was hard because I thought, no, I need to know what the dawn is. I, you know, I don't want to get into the into the hijinks of the of Don Giovanni. I want to get into the real kind of that the danger side. And it, so, I didn't sing in Don Giovanni. I sang Mazzetto um, when I was a bit younger. But you know, I gave it. I was given the chance around forty when I was given my first dawn to real, and and that was useful. Hmm. And then go to the music again. What are the other characters saying about you? What are the you know what's the what read around it? You know Casanova, um, Da Ponte's life. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, if there was ever a treasure trove of ideas as to how to play, you just have to read Da Ponte's biography. Exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, but in any case, um, yes. I mean, it's always about really what relates to me. How can I broadcast the feelings and the and the challenges that I find within myself? How does that relate to any character? No, Bluebeard is not part of my psyche. No, Iago, uh, you know, for goodness sake, uh, you know, Scarpia, <laughs> he's a lot of fun, but, you know, come on. Yeah, we're, yeah. I'm, you know, we, I ain't there. I wouldn't get hired if, if I was. So yeah. <laughs> it, it's really that, you know, it's, it's, but it's pushing the boundaries of what is, what, what makes people think about, you know, what is that, uh, um, psychopath uh, personality. And there's there's some good research about that and, you know, the behavior of such. And I, yeah, I've always been curious about why people behave physically as well, the way they do. Um, you know, what it is about, the, you know, playing Falstaff, for instance, you know, there's ways of moving. Um, 
the, the idea of stillness on stage, really mm. very important. I learned that from uh, from Robin Phillips, the the, the wonderful theatre um, Stratford, uh, Ontario uh, uh, director. Um, uh, Robert Wilson, you know this mm. this this idea of energy. Um, I'll try and do it on camera, but you know the idea of extending your limbs and creating a tension um, uh, of of uh, literally of of body energy through through the arc of your the way you hold your hand, and it's uh, and these are all wonderful ideas that uh, you know that I kept learning have have kept learning and I've enjoyed every moment. Oh my goodness! So when you you're exceptionally good at them as well, and I think it, as Taylor kind of that comment popped up, it's seen Siniago for him was yeah one of the best theatrical experiences he's experienced. So you're you're moving people obviously not only with with the music, which as you said is so so incredibly beautiful, but um, when you combine that with a performance which is looks and feels authentic, um, mm. yeah, there's nothing better in theater. Well, what's interesting is someone, say, like uh, the great British director Nicholas Heitner, um, says he likes to work with opera singers because uh, opera singers need to, or people, singers who work in opera, he should, I should say, <laughs> are that, um, uh, that the whole idea of holding a characterization through moments of emotional transition. And, mm. and be because the music helps you, and uh, and if you can start a scene and then make your way through the scene to the point that you want to get to, riding the music and your vocal performance as well, then that's, you know, that's a job done. And it, it is a job, you know, concentration, focus, um, and, and living, living each moment. I mean, that's the only other thing I'd say is that I am constantly thinking, what is my character thinking right now? What's he thinking hmm. right now? What's he thinking right now? And how's he reacting? Who's he looking at? Why is he re? And so those are those are, and adrenaline really helps with that kind of um, focus. <laughs> ah, words of wisdom. This is this is wonderful. Um, you're Canadian. You were born. Where were you born in Canada? I was born in Montreal. Ah, okay. Yeah, Montreal born. Was there for the first seven years of my life. Then uh, moved to Ottawa, and um, that's where my mom still lives in our home there. And uh, I miss it, boy. I just miss it. I miss it. Well, Canadian, obviously, um, Canada is very proud of you. And one of those commemorations was, which has to be very. Oh, it's just whipped <laughs> up there. But you were you're a stamp. You're a Canadian post. <laughs> you're a postage stamp on. 2017, <laughs> they released a Canadian opera series. And how, how does that feel when you get sort of national sort of recognition? It's sort of kind of outside of the opera world, but by your by the country itself. Well, I'm I'm fiercely patriotic, you know, mm. and I mean I reflect on really the so many yeah, I mean from from the ground up, I I believed and I, I do feel that, yeah, being born Canadian is this kind of extraordinary thing where anything is possible. Hmm. Of course, there are, I know that doesn't feel right for, for every Canadian, but I did, I did feel that and I feel it's a noble aim of the Canadian society to, to try and right wrongs, to try and be aware of one's, you know, of one's fellow, fellow Canadian and fellow human being. Um, and I think, you know, uh, people might say, yeah, we were just too nice a nation, but hmm. I would, I would prefer to travel uh, around the world as a, as a, someone who can be trusted and, and seen to as, as a reliable uh, fellow human being. Um, no, I've 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 been very grateful for the opportunities that uh, that I've had to to, to return to Canada, um, and you know if if one's life was a little bit more um, if if one could teleport a little bit more easily, yeah. then I I would much much rather have 
spent more creative time uh, at home. Well, encouraging, really, because uh, I think that the diversity of our nation is a, is something to be so celebrated. And and uh, I have in recent years been pained to hear that some people have not felt uh, mm -hmm. as part of our our thing and i think of course now it is up to us to to move forward on this and um and and let's hope we can yeah well you're you're a great ambassador for canada around the world and canada is ready to to welcome you back whenever whenever <laughs> we can um as we kind of yeah yes let's hope so a hundred percent um as we kind of wrap up this brief conversation uh when it comes back to operas and as you kind of look forward to future projects, are there any dream operas or roles that, that you haven't done yet that you're looking, man, all these flashbacks. I also saw you, um, yeah, and the Meister singer at Glyndebourne. So like you're, you're getting all over sort of the repertoire in opera. And is there, is there something up, upcoming you'd love to do? Um, well, you know, yeah, again, when I stopped singing, I thought, well, am I satisfied with, with what I've done, what's what's next, and of course there there are new projects ahead, um, uh, which are very 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 exciting, um, and so I'm sort of consumed with the focus of those uh, coming up, um, and they'll be made clear in 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 <laughs> in, in due in due course. Of course, we're always prevented from saying exactly what, but uh, interestingly enough, I, there's an opera that has yet to be written. Um, and uh, there's there's actually uh, or a couple actually. Uh, one is about Colonel John By of of Ottawa. He huh. is a very uh, he built the Rideau Canal between uh, Kingston and Ottawa. Um, he was a Brit and uh, just a lieutenant, but um, he uh, he he sold his life basically um, to build that canal. And I would love there to be a tribute of some sort he would he he went over budget that's all that was his crime <laughs> and uh and he basically lived lived a destitute life lost his family as a result of these uh hardships um anyway and retired to a place which is only a few miles away from here where i am right now anyway that's a great theme the other one is galileo i wonder if there's a an mm. opera about Galileo, yet to be written. Um, anyway, otherwise, what is it? Antony of Antony and Cleopatra, the barber. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe uh, the Flying Dutchman. That would be a oh, fun wow. one to do, really fun one to do. Um, there's a few more of Verdi that I, I'm really hoping will come come online. Macbeth, I think, would be a... That's a big thing. Uh, but I I hope at some point maybe oh. that just might happen well you're getting getting everyone excited about the possibilities um as gavin said thank you mr finley for being a key part of my opera experience these past 20 years roh coliseum glyndebourne many more years please yeah it that's must the be hope. <laughs> that's the hope exactly yeah Whoa. well <laughs> well well jerry this has been incredible oh sonny as well saw 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 you as robert oppenheimer uh live in london a few years back just incredible it must be really uh, fulfilling to, to know that you're inspiring and moving people literally all over the world. It must, yeah, it must hey, feel nice. Well, you know, I can't, I, I can't believe the joy and, and pleasure I've had in just doing what I've loved to do. And the fact that I've been so lucky to, to be part of some, some great, great projects has been, uh, yeah, I, I've, yeah, count my blessings all the time. Well, when you, go to visit your mom and I go to visit my in-laws when this is all good. We, let's meet up in the Glebe and have a coffee oh, or something. Definitely. Absolutely. My Wonderful. Home yes. Well, it's been great chatting, Gerald, and um, hope is on its way and spring can't get here soon enough. But uh, thank you for taking the time to chat today. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the best, Joel, in all your enterprises as well. It's so great to see such energy. Um, happening um in that uh in that kernel of uh of of theatrical enterprise that you have it's fan absolutely fantastic it has such repercussions and thank you again for 
messiah complex because for me that was just like a dream of returning to canada and being immersed in the music that i love oh thank you so much all right thank you again and and right. uh, that's gerald finley lovely to see you you too thank you for tuning in to listen to our conversation um Stay tuned, uh, follow on our website, our emails, stay tuned to our socials just to find out what's next and the, the next interview that I'll be able to share with you all and all future ATG events. Um, again, thank you for tuning in and we look forward to the next time.